Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and today is our basically our Thanksgiving Day uh, special, which will be airing again this Friday as well. But if you're watching this Friday, ignore what I just said. Moving on, let's talk about some of the weather that's happening during your Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, this weekend, you can expect, uh, especially today, Wednesday, um, you can expect your weather to be currently 37 degrees. 60% uh, chance of rain. Pretty much going to be raining pretty much all this weekend long. So if you plan on traveling, just be aware of the road conditions are going to be a bit rainy throughout this week. But if you're traveling back on Friday, it looks like it's going to be a little bit easier later that day with highs into the 40s. But Thanksgiving Day, it says it's going to be as high as 52 degrees. Saturday's going to be 42, and it's going to pretty much stay that way throughout the weekend. So you're going to have those uh, slight chances of rains. Um, it's going to kind of fluctuate throughout the weekend. So you can expect of let those things to happen here. Um, as it is a special, um, I do have a uh, flagship Friday today. I also have uh, dub and stuff today as well. And I am going to be talking about some of the uh, city council uh, uh, things that happened on Monday. But first, let's uh, let's throw it over to um, some of uh, some news that's happening here at MCAT today. Uh, I usually talk about news in general, but I'd rather not talk too much in terms of like current events. Uh, but there is an upcoming event that's um, going to be happening for MCAT, and that's called our, let me just uh, cue it up, it's called our Winter Days. Winter Days here at MCAT, uh, we're going to be hosting a bunch of kids um, aged 9 to uh, 14 here at MCAT during the winter break, uh, please pause, um, but also our Saturday uh, drop-ins are still going to be going on throughout every single Saturday throughout this winter time, and, and including this Saturday as well. But just letting you guys know right here and now is that between December 27th and 29th, during the winter break, we're going to be doing a 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, um, kind of like school day camping type deal where uh, kids uh, and, and, of course, parents uh, who have their kids throughout the uh, winter break and they have trouble finding someone to kind of look after them when they're going back to work. Uh, we offer this from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We also have pre-care starting as early as 8 a.m. for anybody who wants to uh, jump on that as well. It is the uh, simple price of $99 for uh, per kid to join our um, nice little winter camp. So we call it Winter Days, and it's going to be hosting MCAT kids as well. Um, but also, just letting you guys know, uh, going back to uh, more of our uh, Saturday animation, uh, Saturday, um, every single Saturday, MCAT offers uh, kids between the ages of 9 and 13. Um, um, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., the fee is $10 for up up to uh, four hours of learning and fun. You can call us at 542-6228 if you would like to learn more about this. Um, you can also email us mcat at mcat.org. Um, a lot of times uh, we always encourage uh, parents to bring a thumb drive so we can um, basically uh, put what the kids have created um, in step on, uh, on stop animation in that. So. That's that. Um, if you want to learn more uh, more about me and my morning show, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. But without further ado, I'm going to present to you guys. Um, it is the uh, basically the kickoff to the holiday season, the Macy's Day Parade. and another. Uh, I don't know who's playing the football game, but there's always a football game on Thanksgiving. Uh, why we make our football players play football and not actually spend time with their families it always baffles me. Anyways, without further ado, here is the kickoff off to the holiday season with a, a 1948 cartoon Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Santa Claus. <laughs> Wake up. What? <laughs> What's everybody going on in here? Oh snap. Would you look at that? I got a shining nose. I think I got an idea. Hey, buddy, wake up. <laughs> Yo, man, listen, Dolph. I hate to be rude, <laughs> but you got a nose that I need to help fly through these planes. <laughs> Come on, Rudolph. Guide my sleigh, and I will show you the way. Yo, plus your nose would really accentuate my rims, yo. All right, but I gotta go with my parents. Go, Santa. Don't worry. He's not a stranger. He's Santa. Don't worry, Santa. I just had to write a couple letters to some other witnesses and potential people. Here, let me light the way. My name is Santa, and I'm here to say that Rudolph will light the way. Light it, Rudolph. Light it, Rudolph. You got like this, Santa Claus. All right, we're here at Bye 
Bonnieville. Rabbits. Get presents too. I've been looking for a hood ornament, and I'm so glad you decided to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Yo, and this is how you stuff a stocking. Hey, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Heary, heary, from now on, reindeers must walk on their two back hooves. Jeez, I swear, you guys, no one listens to me. Yeah. I'm so glad they stopped that two reindeer enter, one reindeer leave thing. Gee, thanks, Beth. Yeah, look how special I am. Oh man, I heard he got his nose did. This is Rudolph. <laughs> you my boy now, Rudolph. You my boy. Yeah, I can die in peace. Hey guys, back. We're not we're not gonna talk about that like ever again, ever again. So let's talk about city council. So city uh, had a really nice, short and sweet, and to the point meeting that happened on Monday. And let's kick things off with a little bit of public comment um, from um, Kathy Deshaw, uh, who says some nice things about the outgoing John Wilkins. So here she is. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Councilman John Wilkins for his numerous years of service to the City Council. I found he was always willing to listen to his constituents and neighborhood council volunteers, and I wish him all the best and good times with his grandkids. While I was out campaigning for City Council, numerous concerns were brought to my attention. In Ward 5, there are two elementary schools in particular that have ambiguous signage for drivers. With distracted driving on the rise and hearing of vehicles failing to yield for children trying to cross for school, I decided to conduct an unofficial poll on Facebook. Um, anyone could vote. So, and as we know, it's kind of hard to get people to vote sometimes. But So out of the 66 people who did vote, they all were in favor of adding some descriptive signage or flashing yellow crossing lights to the crossing at 39th and South Reserve Street along with adding signs alerting drivers that, it's actu that says it's actually a school zone. So currently, this is the signage that is on 39th Street South Reserve, and um, there's nothing to indicate that you're actually kind of entering a, an area where there's a school nearby. All right, so uh, that was Kathy uh, Deshaw, and of course uh, John Debari later on answered uh, a qu the uh, the uh, concerns. Um, and according to John, uh, and according to John Debari, that um, that there is signage going to be posted there, and there's also going to be more of an area for uh, uh, alerting drivers about the oncoming. Um, crosswalks as well so that's just kind of saying that part but of course I have John Wilkins uh, um, he has fought for these kind of areas uh, he's always been concerned about children and the traffic areas especially when making new curb and sidewalk to basically be able to have crosswalks for kids especially if it's in a school area like this as well so his term ends January 2018 but it may actually end just before that here is John Wilkins with this remark Thank you to all my supporters out there. Thank you to the neighborhood council. I think I've been on that for God, 20 years or more. <laughs> uh, this might be my last night because I'm going in for surgery. I'll find out next Monday, actually, um, when that'll be. So I might be here next Monday night, but I'm not sure. And I really appreciate all the support I've gotten. So thank you. Marilyn. All right, so that was uh, John Wilkins uh, with his potential kind of like final words. But uh, other than that, there is a proclamation. I just want you guys to know that uh, uh, um, not only is it Black Friday, but it's also uh, – uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Okay, what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> – the city of Missoula is uh, did a proclamation which basically talked about um, by local Saturdays. So um, I always think I'm um, okay. So 
Black Friday is happening this Friday. And as a result, as a reaction, the city of Missoula wants people to buy more local. So they're having some special deals happening on a Saturday for anybody who is interested in shopping in the downtown Missoula area on Saturday. And here's John Wilkins with the proclamation. Whereas small business from the backbone of our local economy generates jobs and approving the quality of life for citizens. And whereas the city of Missoula, Montana supports the official local small business and recognize the critical role they play in our community. And whereas small business Saturday is a nationwide campaign to cultivate business for small merchants on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And Small Business Saturday will stimulate growth, grow locally for small merchants by following in the tradition of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, two of the busiest shopping days of the year. And whereas we encourage citizens to consider shopping at small businesses, I'm sorry, at small merchants on Small Business Saturday on a way to boost the local economy and strengthen our small business community. And the, the mayor's not here, but now whereas John Ingen, mayor of the city of Missoula in the state of Montana, do hereby proclaim November 25th, 2017, in Missoula, Montana, as Small Business Saturday, and encourage our res residents to recognize and support small business within our community by shopping these establishments on Saturday following Thanksgiving. And witness, I have hereunto set my hand and called the great seal of the city of Missoula and the state of Montana to be affixed at Missoula, Montana this 20th day of November in the year 2017. So there's a proclamation. All right, so that was John Wilkins with the proclamation. If you guys are interested in getting any nice little goodie bags, it's happening on uh, this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this is uh, basically, if you, you all you got to do is go to the MSO Hub from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to get free small goodies, free hot cocoa, and a list of sales, deals, and treats available throughout the heart of Missoula. Of course, free carriage rides are also available on East Pine Street. So if you see the horse and uh, cart wandering around, it's a good prelude to the beginning of those uh, horse, uh, horse-drawn carriage, horse-drawn carriage rides that are happening in the downtown Missoula area. So, if you uh, want to get on that, you can get free carriage rides this weekend as well during the um, by local Saturday. So, support someone's dream and support locally owned businesses this holiday season, starting with Small Business Saturday. Uh, Gwen Jones, uh, um, another um, news item, um, Gwen Jones talks about uh, a Missoulian article which reflects on m the Missoula property tax. An article in the Missoulian, in yesterday's Missoulian, the Sunday paper on property values, which was on the front page. And I think it was a really clear explanation of what is going on with our property tax. So I would encourage people in the city of Missoula who are trying to understand why their property tax is going up to read this article. Um, I know that I certainly get a lot of um, messages and emails from constituents regarding their property taxes. It's a difficult subject, um, but this was a big reappraisal year. If you read the article, it talks about how we've had six-year cycles. Now we've gone to two-year cycles on reappraisals and also the timing of the reappraisals um, with the 2008 recession. All of this, it's complicated, but it, bottom line is it caused a big increase in our property taxes. And Missoula, Kalispell, Bozeman, and, and Whitefish are the cities seeing the most rapid rise in property values. So these are the cities that are seeing a rapid rise in property taxes. So it's a big topic of discussion. It's complicated, but I think this Missoulian article did a great job um, explaining a complicated subject in a very understandable way. So I would encourage people to read it. Basically, if you uh, don't remember some of the financial crisis back in 2009, is that the uh, banks, a lot of times the banks uh, bet on the mortgages uh, to uh, make any extra money, which eventually the mortgage uh, system did fail, which resulted in a lot of the banks uh, needed to be bailed out by the U.S. government, which is why 
property tax reserves are much higher because the money that they was used to bail out the banks is being used to basically for property tax f that you guys are paying off. So um, makes it harder to be a homeowner nowadays for sure. Um, let's move on to the next subject before I get too much into it. Um, Jason Deal, he is the fire, fire chief here in the city of Missoula. Um, he explains why it's important to have an ambulance with the uh, fire crews and at fire stations for any um, emergencies they get responded to. So here is his reasoning behind the ambulance. I'm not here to, to bash the private ambulance service, Missoula Emergency Services. Um, they have overall been meeting the response time uh, standards that are outlined in their performance contract. But the, the justification for this is acute instances of um, excessive delay in, uh, in ambulance transport where our firefighters are on scene for 10, 20, 30 minutes or more before an ambulance can arrive to perform the transport. Um, there have also been instances and, and more, more so in, in recent uh, months of where there was no ambulance available to respond at all. About a month and a half ago, we did transport a patient in the fire engine um, to a community hospital. Um, uh, another occasion, we um, had to arrange for a private vehicle to transport a patient to St. Pat's. Um, there's also been other instances where we've been notified that there's no ambulances available to respond. And this is a direct result, I believe, in um, our Missoula Emergency Services has a very large response area and they're being relied upon more and more to provide um, ambulance transport to rural areas that may, through a loss of volunteerism, their, their um, local ambulance providers are not as resilient or not in existence anymore. So I think they're being counted upon to provide service to a greater area. Than All right. So uh, the, uh, the Missoula Fire Department uh, gave a presentation earlier uh, in a, fi a finance administration and finance committee meeting um, in which it went to uh, this meeting as well. And of course, it did get approved by the city of C city council. And of course, uh, um, Here's Brian Von Losberg uh, basically saying that he agrees with uh, Jason Deal. Things that can be true uh, simultaneously. One is that the uh, Messi can be meeting their, the terms of their performance contract, and while meeting those terms, it can leave a gap in um, the uh, the quality and timing of care that this that, that's, that's essential to the community. So um, I really appreciate the detail during the committee meeting of how this service would complement the private service that exists and um, because that gap can exist while they meet the terms of uh, their agreement to me this is a, a no-brainer it's a must uh, it's a must do for the welfare of the community so I'm supportive all right so um, so the city of Missoula agreed to purchase a uh, $173,000 um, for a new ambulance for the fire department's emergency response units um, Confusion about Linda Vista uh, Boulevard bike lanes brought to light a discrepancy between state and local law and how these laws are enforced. Namely, there is no local ordinance in the parking chapter to prohibit parking in bike lanes and as such, th so the city will remedy this with an ordinance change to give police more authority to enforce parking issues. And Jordan Hess talks about these issues. Um, a couple of use cases, very uh, selected or select use cases around the community um, uh, were pointed out by the Missoula Parking Commission um, where more parking would be um, needed to be taken out in order to implement the ordinance than would actually be required um, to, to have a transit stop. Um, and so um, the proposal tonight is just to, is just to reword that a little bit to make it a little bit more workable for um, the Parking Commission and for Mountain Line. Um, so with that, I'll make a, a motion to reconsider an ordinance of the Missoula City Council amending, 
uh, amending yeah, Missoula Municipal Code Title 10, Chapter 10.22, Section 10.22070, titled Parking Prohibited in Specified Places in Order to Prohibit Parking in a Bicycle Lane or Bicycle Path designated for exclusive use of bicycles or within 40 feet of a transit stop. All right, so basically uh, one of the problems that they ran into during a lot of these committee meetings is that just because they wanted to have designated parking areas, um, they would actually get rid of more parking spots if they were to result in uh, the uh, uh, the prior solution, which uh, which would meet the standards of the basically the transit uh, mountain line deal. So what they they, they did to kind of uh, adjust this is to kind of like uh, adjust the ordinance to better favor the bike lanes for these areas as well, um, and also um, without taking out any um, certain parking spots in that general area. So you can still, uh, I guess you can park there, but you just can't park there if it's on a bike lane. That's just kind of how they're changing the ordinance. Um, so basically be careful when parking in areas with a bike lane. Um, you may get a ticket. Uh, to watch these meetings and, um, and more, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a wonderful website where you guys can enjoy some city council on and see what upcoming agenda items are. Basically, get involved with your city government. This is the easiest way to get involved with any city government. They're always looking for uh, volunteers and people to be on committees and uh, councils and reports and stuff like that. But I think the easier way, easiest way to get your foot in the door is going through uh, your neighborhood councils as well. It's a uh, yeah, it's a great way to get involved with the city of Missoula. Um, if you're also wondering how to access those meetings and more, you can also go to mcat.org. So sometimes uh, people have been having trouble uh, accessing the Cyrus. Site, but the easiest way to do it is you just click on the tab that says 190, which is our civic channel, which shows all our government um, um, uh, broadcasting and whatnot, and you get to watch Missoula City Council. Missoula Live is also new for the next two weeks, so if you guys are getting bored this weekend as well, you guys can enjoy that. Um, but if you also want to watch some of the uh, programming that are, is going to be on MCAT, here are some of the new programs going to be airing on MCAT, courtesy of Media Assistant Grants for the City of Missoula. And when we come back, I'll talk about some new movies that you guys shouldn't see this weekend. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to this fourth edition of Out and About. Today we're going to visit with Carolyn Stevens, who is one of the caretakers at the Moon Randolph Homestead, which is just a stone's throw away from downtown Missoula. Thanks for being on the show. So we're going to take a tour with you, right, of um, a little bit of what there is to see at the Moon Randolph Homestead. Yeah, we'll explore some of the historic buildings that are here and explore a little bit about the history of the site. Um, we have livestock here, and so mm -hmm. it's a living homestead, sort of a working homestead. Um, and so we can explore a little bit of that, too. Great. Um, join us for the next 10 minutes when we take a look at the Moon Randolph Homestead. The music is by a wonderful Seattle area cellist uh, called Lori Goldston, who once played cello with, uh, I'm a high school teacher, uh, so you know what, how, how much this is, how important this is. She once played cello with Nirvana. <laughs> Can I just say that what I get from my student, oh yeah. <laughs> I've done a collaboration with the person who played cello with Nirvana. <laughs> Life is good. Um, and then, in addition, both cover art and, and some end paper arts is by a wonderful visual artist, um, Karen Lamott. Uh, and uh, there's her work on the cover, and then uh, there's two more of her pieces shown inside the book. So it's gorgeous. Um, the design of the book is wonderful, and I feel unbelievably fortunate to have all of those pieces come together. And this really goes to the question of how far do you want to take? Uh, one's concept of an externality, um, which can be bounded oftentimes only by the limits of one's imagination. And the two, and the two examples you raise, uh, labor costs and carbon dioxide, are to some degree interrelated in the sense that you might have uh, a, a, an instrument privately arrived at between two parties, some kind of a contract um, that attempts to get at the cost of that externality or the benefit of that externality. Um, but because you're in an economic regulatory setting where you're sort of seeking you know, rights and privileges from a regulator, 
rather than trying to trade that, that thing market to market, you know, between private actors in a market, that's where the complication is introduced. So my, my criticism of, uh, of, say, internalizing a, a carbon dioxide price in the example that I gave is really that it, it represents um, sort of a, a good example of the public choice theory you heard alluded to yesterday, where a private actor has co-opted the rhetoric of the environmental movement in order to adopt a price on carbon, um, but who, in the end, is the price in carbon that's being paid for by all of you, even though it's not resulting in any incremental carbon benefit, who is the price on carbon actually being dividended to? Well, the investors in, in private utility who aren't actually using it to reinvest in, in carbon abating forms of energy. To try and pass Medicaid expansion. It's important for us. I have family members that are covered under Medicaid expansion. I have people in my life that rely on Medicaid in order to get health care. Um, and it was, it was deeply personal to us and to our members. So we lobbied nearly every single day during that legislative session. Lobbying looks a little different to us, though. Um, it's usually not uh, my boss, Sarah, and I going to Helena and speaking on behalf of people. We drive carloads of people to go up and speak to their own legislators about what their experiences are. So there was one particular legislator from East Missoula in the 2015 legislative session that was not interested in expanding Medicaid at all. He had a lot of preconceived notions about the people who relied on Medicaid, about uh, what it would mean to have those dollars for the program. Um, and it was really problematic. But every single week, a carload of women from East Missoula whose kids and families rely upon the service and needed expanded Medicaid in order to, you know, just make ends meet and have access to health care, went up, pulled him aside, and said, listen, this is why this is important to me. One operating in light and one in shadow. And I learned a lot of somethings at my mom's side in all those meetings. I learned to listen like you mean it and live one day at a time. I learned the power of community and finding your tribe. I learned that life was too precious and to spend it blitzed out. And I learned what true authenticity was all about. And I learned what it means from the heart to share. And I learned to have my love and respect for the serenity prayer. Having acceptance for the things that we cannot change. Developing courage to change the things that we can. And honoring the wisdom to know the difference. Honoring the wisdom to know the difference. And now, well, you might not believe me, but it's true. I've never even smoked pot. And after only a handful of times, I gave up drinking long ago because I knew better. I had learned better in those rooms. Please don't think you're immune to the grips of this disease. Watch closely your actions, because there's a spectrum at play. And if you're already in the fray, please find a way to work the program to the best of your ability one day at a time, my friends. And maybe just one breath at a time. Hey guys, welcome back. It's movie time. Kicking things off with a movie about... Uh, story that was created uh, back in the 1800s, the 19th century, if you want to get uh, political about it. Um, basically, uh, from the creators of A Christmas Carol. But no, the actual creator comes a docudrama about the telling of the telling of that story, joining Tar Charles Dickens in his quest to make Christmas relevant during the time of stick toys, Legos, and Tickle Me Elmo's. He's a man haunted by the ghost of his writer's block in, the t in this tale of selflessness that creates Ebenezer Scrooge. In this ghost story turned acid trip as the writer who is best known for his book and not so much Tale of Two Cities and Oliver Twist, which have very similar themes of class, str class struggle in industrial London. Watch how he turns a cultural culture of selfish rich white guys soft in this tale of tales. It's kind of like a uh, reenactment with a bigger budget and the guy from Beauty and the Beast. Um, so, honestly, there's there's been many tellings of the tale of A Christmas Story. Sir Patrick Stewart did one. Um, George C. Scott did one as well. I'm sure, I mean, uh, some of you uh, film nerds out there were just like, what about the 1935 version of A Christmas Carol? Yeah, that one too. Um, but that's kind of what the movie's going to be going on there. Um, 
And up next, uh, I, I have no segue, I'm just going to move on. Uh, hey guys, remember when Disney tried to buy the rights to Dia de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead for you English speakers? Uh, they did. They totally did. They totally, tr Disney tried to basically patent Day of the Dead parade. And as a result, they created a basic international incident. Um, so basically, now you got the guilt trip movie called Coco. Join the main character in his protagonistic journey through the land of the dead to get answers from the man who may or may not be his father. If this movie would be any good, it would uh, be a cautionary tale about not meeting your heroes because he'd want to take Coco's place in the land of the living. I don't know. That's how I do it. Um, but, uh, you know, Disney wouldn't be like that. So, uh, basically, the whole idea is that... Um, Basically, the the um, the guy who died, who may or may not be his father, just like would be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I was never there for you. If I would have known, uh, you were there, I would have been there." Blah blah blah, that kind of thing. And um, so they spend some time together. Something happens. Uh, there's probably some kind of bad guy or whatnot. So and then he he'll probably say, "I'll be right here," and then tears will like um, start pouring because it's a Disney movie. Um, but yeah, tears, 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 and then the end. And uh, maybe he's a little bit better for it, better from it. I don't know. It's it's a Disney movie. So let's move on to the next movie. Um, do you like Winston Churchill during wor World War II? Uh, it's rhetorical. Now you get to see Gary Oldman portray this old uh, drunk art in a, on the peak of his career in the form of a movie that has a lot of talking and a lot of intense self-medicating with scotch. More, oh, uh, move over, Brian Cox. Get out of the way, John Lithgow, and stay put, uh, Rod Taylor. It's time to see Gary Oldman's put on the fat suit for a story that we've already seen in Brian Cox just uh, last year in Churchill. It has uh, basically... Uh, it has all the accolades on any Oscar contender, World War II, powerful speeches, and Gary Oldman. So, that's, uh, wait, hold on a second, I'm getting, I'm getting word, uh, from my mind, um, that we have some, uh, we have a speed round, so let's go through it. Uh, uh okay, okay, uh, this is about a teen who engages a sexual relationship with an older man while visiting Italy. Um, that's, that's a spicy meatball. Okay, moving on. Um... This next movie is uh, Chapawakichi, um, <laughs> which follows the story of Ted Kennedy. You want to learn about Ted Kennedy some more? Why not? Um, he is the lesser known of the Kennedys about a car crash that happened to him once. The next one is Hedy Lamar Bombshell, the Hedy Lamar story. Warning, documentary in process. This movie talks about Hedy Lamar, who invented but was not credited for inventing Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other GPS communicating devices, which basically um, helped shape the world we, the modern world that we live in today. So learn more about that as well. I think, I mean, I, I honestly, I'm pretty biased towards like movies in general because, th you know, you already know all the stories, but I'm always interested in kind of documentaries. I, I, it's hard for me to say uh, bad things about documentaries, but I will. <laughs> so anyways, uh, watch uh, basically... Uh, uh, a, a woman who is beautiful, who is wonderful, not be uh, taken seriously. Haven't heard that one before. Uh, <laughs> but that basically does it for all your uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, new movies that are coming out this weekend that I that you've probably seen before in one way or another, but they're just giving it another spin to it. So without further ado, I have another crappy movie that I'm going to show you guys, and this is from one of the little uh, middle schools here in Missoula, and this is called Beat, uh, The Beat. <laughs> Twinges. Ah! Let's get out of here! Why didn't you take care of them? Like a parent? No, did you? Oh, I get it. Parents are so 
I want you to assassinate them. Oh, do we have to? I don't want to be bad. No, I, you do what I want because I pay you to do what I want. Now, oh, do what I want. Let's go assassinate. One of my workers could go away. Go away, I'm having sad times. Ah. You! Try again. What's your name? I am Dragovich, the most famed criminal of all time. Oh. I stole all of Fort Knox's gold. Dragovich, oh yeah. Yeah, now I remember. I remember you. Finish him off! No way, isn't it? Isn't that a little extreme? You have a bullseye pinned on your back for tons of the greatest villains ever! Yeah. Boss, are you okay? By everything. Even your butt? Can you help me with my head? Yes. Including your face yes. and your pinky toe and pinky finger and thumb and lips five and hours me. later. And everything. And your stomach. Yes. And your arm. Are you dead? <laughs> including your Well, there you guys go. That's pretty much everything that you need to know what's uh, going on. Um, I'll give you a little taste of everything uh, for uh, basically Wednesday's and Friday's show. Um, so I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, stay uh, stay dry. Um, there's a lot of things upcoming here as well. I just want to give a nice little shout out to more MCAT related things. Things. If you guys are interested in doing our Saturday drop-ins, it's happening this Saturday, um, the 25th. So if you uh, want to buy local in the downtown area, because it is buy local Saturday or Saturday downtown business. I don't know. There's like five different names for it. I wasn't paying attention. But if you want to do it, you can drop your kids off here from 1 to 5 p.m. and go out do your shopping. Um, basically, it's a great way to do all your uh, um, Christmas shopping this weekend as well um, and also have your kids uh, have some supervision while they also get to create some wonderful Lego figurines as well. But if you're really thinking far ahead, which I know you are, you can do our winter days, which is happening during the Christmas break. So um, I know that some of the kids are getting some new toys. Maybe they want to bring it to life through uh, Stop Animation, which will be doing this uh, winter as well from December 27th to the 29th. All you got to do is click on the link that's on the page and you get to uh, to our form all, all it costs is $99 i'm not i'm i'm, I'm just going to be selling it throughout pretty much the whole month of december and uh we have one more episode in november happening next week it is november 30th which kicks off uh my play so if you guys are interested in going to see a wonderful play about a Christmas Carol, yes, I'm talking a Christmas Carol. Um a Christmas Carol the musical premieres at MCT happening um December 1st, Thursday, and it's going to basically go on for three weeks. So um, Thursday through Sunday, and then again, it'll happen Wednesday through Sunday for the next uh, week, two weeks after that. This is going to happen from December 1st through this December 17th. So get your tickets as soon as possible, um, and you can go check out a wonderful show with a wonderful cast of people um, from the guy who is the owner of the Loose Caboose Coffee Place uh, will be playing Scrooge, and then a bunch of other people will be playing all sorts of different parts. Uh, a couple of people that I went to high school with are in it as, as well. It's, like, it, it, it's great. It's wonderful. But uh, let's see, um, there's really not much else to talk about. I do have a new song for you guys. So I'm going to um, sub subject you guys to another wonderful song um, created by yours truly. So uh, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>